Good afternoon. My name is Charlie Wu. I'm a board member of Committee 100. The committee is very pleased to uh, have uh, Ambassador Locke flying all the way from uh, Seattle to be here with us to moderate the uh, one of the two sessions, the second half, a conversation with uh, the Democratic National Committee. And this morning, uh, we had a conversation with the Republican National Committee. So in, I'm just taking a few minutes. This is a halftime show entertainment. And because when you bring in as accomplished Chinese Americans, uh, Governor Locke, and uh, in, in addition to talking about the politics with both parties, and it's really interesting, particularly for the young people, to share a little bit, maybe answer a couple of questions about his experiences. First, when he was elected 19 years ago as the first Chinese American governor in the history of the United States, and he was reelected and served two terms for the state of Washington, a first for Chinese American, and a few years, a few years later, he was appointed by President Obama to be Secretary of Commerce. Mr. Secretary Locke is not the first Chinese American to be presidential cabinet. Elaine Chao was, and I think Stephen Chu was also served along with you. But he was in charge of trade and commerce, particular dealing with the US and China relationship. He was also at the center of trade disputes finger pointing and allegations of unfair trade practices. So he was in a very sensitive position, with a position to do a lot of great things to promote interaction between the two countries, also at the center of a lot of disputes. So, and then after that, he was an appointed ambassador to China. Again, he's not the first Chinese American ambassador. We had a couple of them among our committee 100 members. But he is the first Chinese American ambassador to China, something that I didn't expect that would happen in our lifetime. Because we all know the importance, the relationship between two countries, and he's in a very sensitive position. To many Chinese, he was going back to the motherland. He looked just like every Chinese in there, but he represents the United States of America. And he doesn't speak Chinese, although he looked Chinese. So maybe there are a lot of questions in there, Maybe uh, you can address that, but I couldn't help to take a 30-second halftime commentary. Uh, I think if both parties were invited to address a Jewish American organization, if the questions were raised about anti-Semitic remarks, do you think the party would just brush it aside as parties don't control candidates or Effectively, they have to do, they have to go to more Chinese American dinners. And for Ambassador Locke, you know, you are in charge of the second half. I hope you elevate the discussion. And with that, I'm going to ask you about your experience as Ambassador, maybe Commerce Secretary, as well as the first Chinese American governor. No, you still have. Oh. Well, thank you very much, Charlie. And first of all, let me just say it's a deep honor to be here at the 25th anniversary uh, gala uh, of the uh, uh, Committee of 100. And we, we, we heard the stories last night about how it was founded at the suggestion of Henry Kissinger, but some of the giants that were part of the leadership group that created the Committee of 100 and all the distinguished members uh, that have since become part of the Committee of 100. We heard from um, astronaut Dr. Uh, Chow uh, this morning before lunch and then Dr. Ho right after lunch. And I just, I just marvel and, uh, uh, at their accomplishments for being such incredible trailblazers and risk takers uh, and the success of Chinese Americans throughout America in so many different fields, in government, in finance, in business, in academia, arts and culture, uh, and the list goes on and on. Uh, I have to say that, that so many of the founders and the beginners of the, and the early members of the Committee of 100, really the trailblazers that have enabled so many of us to go on and succeed, and so we owe so much to them. Just as I owe my success in politics to so many of trailblazers, people like S.B. Wu and, and um, uh, Nor Normanetta and uh, um, so many a great uh, um, uh, Bob Matsui, uh, so many who did a really great job while in office, who enhanced the reputation of Asian Americans in office, which then enabled others when they ran uh, to have a positive role model and um, reference point 
that the public could relate to as they considered those of us uh, running for office, whether a Democrat or Republican, uh, whether local, state, or at the national level. Uh, so I am very, very uh, uh, grateful to so many people who supported me and uh, really paved the way for me to uh, succeed in office. And so when I, for instance, was in governor, uh, uh, the first few years as governor, I was invited by so many organizations, Asian American, Chinese American organizations, to attend their annual banquets and gala events all around the country and to receive an award. And I essentially declined virtually all of them because I really felt that it, you know, I could spend a lot of time traveling the country and receiving these accolades for being a first, the first Asian American elected governor on the mainland United States and of course the first Chinese American ever uh, in the history of the United States, whether Hawaii uh, or uh, the mainland. But I really felt that I could do more to help Asian Americans break the bamboo ceiling in politics by being as an effective and respected governor of the state of Washington. And by really focusing on my job, I could then make it easier for others to run and succeed. And so uh, that's what I concentrated my efforts on and I'm really proud of my accomplishments uh, as governor. Uh, when I went to Ambassador, I, I know that uh, Charlie wanted me to comment about uh, the perception and, and reception that I received in China. Um, I think there was a great expectation among the Chinese people, a lot of the Chinese people, that because of my Chinese ancestry, the fact that my mom and dad were born, my dad born in, in uh, rural uh, Taishan village of Guangdong province, my mom being born in Hong Kong, um, and coming over at a, um, at a young age, that because I'm Chinese, of Chinese ancestry that I would actually be more sympathetic to the views of the Chinese government as U.S. ambassador to China. Uh, and I was actually, uh, um, uh, shortly after I went to China, my father passed away. And so my sister and I were take, make, taking a pilgrimage back to the family village to present a picture to be placed on kind of like the family altar. And I met with the party secretary of Guangdong province. Uh, and the, there was American press in the room waiting for me to come in to cover the reaction, the reception by the Chinese government officials. And there was a lot of buzz by many of the aides uh, to the party secretary, which is really the top government official. The Communist Party official always uh, has higher rank than the administrative uh, official. So like the party secretary of, of a province or the state has higher rank than the governor of the state. Um, but anyway, so the party official, uh, all the, the assistance to the party officials were a buzz and excited that I was about to come in and, you know, uh, the, the, the guy returning home to the family village and, um, and uh, paying homage uh, to the ancestors. And the party secretary reminded everybody, said, don't forget, he's really representing America. But nonetheless, um, um, so the Chinese people always had, I think, a, a higher expectation that I would be representing and more sympathetic to the views of China. But because I did not speak Chinese, and in the meetings it's always English, I think it quickly reinforced or conveyed the message, oh no, he may be of Chinese ancestry, but he really is American. And so I, uh, I think that made, uh, um, I, I was able to benefit from both. Uh, the acclaim, uh, the warm reception, the great friendliness, the hospitality of Chinese government officials and Chinese people wherever I went, but also a recognition that I represented America. One final question before we turn over to the, uh, bringing the Democratic Party. What's your advice to young people considering diplomacy, foreign services? I mean, are there some suspicions or rumbling of whether they are loyal to America or they have affinity towards the country that if they would ask to serve in China? Is that a dilemma that um, many young diplomats professionals have to face? Well, I really think that uh, the diplomatic career is really wide open to people of all ethnic groups, including Asian Americans and Chinese Americans. And I know that Ambassador Stapleton Roy is, will be speaking uh, near the end, and he might be able to comment on it because he's seen a lot of changes in the State Department over his career. There is one part of the State Department or diplomatic career that is somewhat problematic in terms of, of people of ethnic backgrounds, and particularly from Asia. And that is that if, if you're if you have the possibility of us being assigned to a very high post, a high position, let's say in China or other parts of Asia, uh, but I'll talk about the China uh, situation. If you still have relatives in China, 
um, then the State Department may not allow you to be posted in China. Even though you were born in the United States, even though your parents uh, uh, live in the United States, the very fact that you may have close relatives, in-laws, still living in China uh, may pose a problem for fear that your your relatives, that, that the government, the foreign government may put pressure on your relatives, which will then influence your actions and decisions uh, within the State Department while you are in China. Uh, and so I think the, we've, we've seen some highly qualified individuals of Chinese Americans uh, who have been denied po uh, high level postings in China because of that family connection. Now that's not just unique to China. Uh, but that is a mentality that the State Department has, and I'm sure it's true with you know, people from uh, other uh, Asian countries or countries around the world as well.